Good morning, everyone, and greetings from the Wisconsin Dells. I go by the legend, joined by my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. And today we're here at the Kalahari Resort. And in this video, we're gonna show you everything there is to do here at this massive complex, including the indoor water park, the outdoor water park, the adventure park, the food, the bars, the room, everything there is to do here. First of all, it's a, a gigantic place as I, I pan around here. Like there's nice. hotel rooms as far as the eye could see. Convention center. Yeah. All right, let's go check things out. Hit some slides. Let's kick off the tour of the Kalahari with its main attraction, and that is the giant indoor water park. It is the star of the show here at the Kalahari in the Wisconsin Dells. It's also probably the reason you booked this hotel, and it lives up to the hype. It's really good, lots of slides, and uh, lots of things to do. Now, we're gonna start the tour by talking about the slide complex in the farthest back part of the water park, as that was home to my favorite slide. Now, this slide complex it has two slides on there. It is the blue one, that is the Master Blaster, and the yellow one is the Victoria Falls. Now, the Master Blaster is personally my favorite slide in the entire water park. It is an uphill, downhill water slide. So if you haven't been on one of these before, you go down a hill and then your slide goes upwards, which is not super common on water slides. And to get up that hill, you're, you're shot up by like sheets of water coming out of the slide. It's really pretty wild. And then the sheets of water, they end up getting all over you once you hit the top of the hill. And these are a lot of fun. There's uh, three uphill segments in this one, which ends up being a pretty long water slide and just a blast. This was my favorite slide in the park. Can't recommend it highly enough. This is uh, something you can go on with one or two people. You ride in a little raft. Now the other water slide in this complex is Victoria Falls. It's a, a much gentler water slide. This is a raft slide for two to three people. You ride kind of in a circle and it's pretty gentle. Couple things to note about this slide, it is the only slide in the water park that goes indoors and outdoors. Now outdoors, it is completely covered, but you are outside the main building. Now a lot of water parks, they'll have plenty of slides that go outside. This is the only one at the Kalahari. It's a pretty gentle slide. And one thing I liked about it is towards the end of the slide, the, the supports of this slide, they're really pretty. They're done up like baobab trees. So it makes the indoor water park feel a little less industrial in that section. Another of the most fun things you could do at the indoor water park is the Flowrider Surf Simulator Wave. Now this is a, an attraction where you can go uh, boogie boarding on it or you could go stand up surfing on it as well. And it's really fun. First of all, it's almost as fun to watch as it is to go ride. As you'll have all sorts of people going on it. You'll have people like this lady here who is very, very, very talented. You'll have little kids, you'll have old people, all different levels of, of experience. So it's really a lot of fun to watch. It's a lot of fun to ride as well. Now, as you can see here, I am not nearly as talented as that lady that went before me, but I still enjoy it. The lifeguard will tell me to try and do trips, but I will not do any tricks. I do not have that kind of talent. Pretty much a, a successful floor rider ride for me is if my shorts don't fall off and I have a good time. I accomplished both of them in all my rides here at the Kalahari, so I gave the flow rider a big thumbs up. Next up on the tour is in the very middle of the water park. There's this big structure here. That is a slide complex with four different water slides on it. First, we're on the side with the yellow and the red slides. Now that red slide is known as the elephant's trunk. It is a uh, just a body slide in the dark speed slide kind of thing. These are not personally my thing. They, uh, the darkness and the, the body slide kind of gives me the feeling of drowning and claustrophobia. They're not really my thing, but that yellow slide which is the zigzag zebra, that was a lot of fun. It's a tube slide that you could take a single person tube on or a double person tube on. You're in the dark, so I'm not sure if you're going really fast or it just feels like you're going really fast because it's in the dark. Also, both these slides empty out into the lazy river, so you could just ride your tube right from that yellow slide into the lazy river. Now, the yellow slide, that, that zigzag zebra, it is the only slide in the entire water park you do have to bring a tube up the stairs with you. Now on the other side, there's another two slides, again, another two very different slides, and that's going to be the Rippling Rhino, which is that happy green slide, as well as the Tizanian Twister, which is that purple bowl looking slide. Starting with the Rippling Rhino, this is a one, two, or three person toboggan style tube slide. And uh, I don't know if I've ever been on a slide with the, that kind of seating arrangement where you could sit three people in a row like a bobsled. And it was pretty fun. A gentle slide, definitely one of the gentler slides in the water park but still a fun time, especially if you had three people going down that thing, that would be a blast. And uh, you don't have to carry your tube up the stairs. Uh, Molly liked that one quite a bit as she's not a fan of the more extreme slides, which if you're talking extreme slides, that bowl slide, the Tizanian Twister, it is pretty extreme as uh, you go fast and you spin around a bowl. And then at the end of the slide, you drop about five feet into a very deep pool of water. Now this is the only slide in the water park you really have to be a strong swimmer to go and do as you do fall into a nine, feet pool so you need to know how to swim and it's also very disorienting 
as you flop into the pool, then you, you get up and you might be inside that, you know, cone of waterfalls. You don't know which way to get out. It's definitely very disorienting. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Also, according to Molly, who filmed my oh-so-graceful body flopping out of this slide, she said I made a funny noise while coming through. So let's take a listen to that right now. Now, one of the first things you see when you come into the water park is this, and that is the water park's wave pool. Now, it's a pretty gentle wave pool, and if you notice, right in the middle of the wave pool, the Lazy River does go right through the middle of the wave pool as well, which is pretty unique. I don't think I've seen that before. Now, the wave pool, it's more for children, but what I do recommend is getting a tube and just hanging out and riding the waves, as in this very gentle wave pool actually turns into a pretty fun wave pool. Uh, me and Molly were in a double-person tube and just kind of riding the waves in. That was a blast. Now, one fun thing about this wave pool area, they also have a little kids play structure as well, which is something, again, very different, where you have a slide that goes right into the wave pool and a couple other fountains and swings and stuff for the little ones to play on. Now, as I mentioned, attached to that wave pool is the Lazy River. And the Lazy River, it's pretty fun. It goes all around the indoor water park. So it takes you from the, the front to the back to the middle. Uh, it's got some nice theming elements on it. One thing, this Lazy River it is very, very slow. So it, it is indeed a very lazy river. Also, one thing that's interesting about the Lazy River with it attaching to the wave pool, when the wave pool is on, part of the Lazy River, well, it becomes more of an action river, as the waves do indeed affect that Lazy River segment as well. Now, the most thrilling slide structure is this one right here, home to the Screamin' Hyena and the Sahara Sidewinders. And these are not for me. These three here, they are Dropbox body slides, which involve going, first of all, you go through the roof of the building, which is kind of cool from a design feature standpoint. And then you sort of get enclosed in what is essentially kind of like a glass coffin. A voice counts down, three, two, one, and then the floor drops out from under you and you go very, very fast on your adventure either through those tube slides or down a very steep slide. Um, I'm really not a fan of things like this, but I, you know what, I wanted to do it so I could review it for the video, and I hated it just as much as I thought. Every bit about this did I not care for. From the little coffin thing, to the little tube slide, to going so fast, water got uh, in my ear, my nose, everywhere. This was not for me. Now they do have three slides like this here, so hopefully the lines for these don't get so long as only the, the bravest of people are going on them, and there's three different ones for the capacity purposes. Now, one of the best places to hang out at the Kalahari is in a hot tub. And there are a couple of hot tubs. There is a family hot tub, and they look great at night as well. These things look fantastic. And these hot tubs are indoor-outdoor hot tubs. So you'll get into them from the indoor water park, go through a little curtain, and then you could go outside. Now, my favorite one is the adults-only one because that's home to the Mud Hut Swim Up Bar. So this is, uh, this is vacation at its finest, everybody. You could uh, hang out, sip in a nice fruity vacation-y drink or a, a beer or wine of your choice. You could watch the game inside or you could go outside. And especially like we visited during the winter, so the hot tub was nice and hot, but uh, you know, it was probably 50 degrees when we were in Wisconsin, so it was pretty cold there. So you get steam coming off of it. Also, there's uh, some pretty cool theming elements at the bar as well. I love those elephants. Now, I, I spent a lot of time here it also, it's, it's nice to take some break. Like if the, the indoor water park was just all water slides all the time, that wouldn't be very relaxing. But when you have the, the hot tub swim up bar, that is a place you can spend a lot of time. Now that's for the adults. For the kids, let's talk about Tico's watering hole. And this is the area for the littlest of kids. And it's got a lot of neat features, including this, a lazy river just for the littlest of kids. It's one feet deep. And those turtles there, they're actually musical instruments, so they make different noises. They've got all sorts of fun fountains in here. I love the African crown cranes. I go to a lot of water parks. I don't think I've ever seen an African crown crane fountain before. There's a big storybook as well, where the kids can learn all about the story behind Tico's watering hole. And it has to do with those elephants right there. A really nice area for the littlest of kids. Now, if kids are too big for Tico's watering hole, they go here to the leopard's lair, which is this big giant splash fortress kind of area. And you've got this wonderful totem pole in the middle with some small basketball hoops attached. And then there's tons and tons of slides on this complex as well. Some for the more toddler size and some for the size that are, uh, you know, the next level up, the children's slide slide, where they might not be big enough for some of the other stuff, or they're trying to work their way up to something like the Master Blaster. You know, if you have kids, you could definitely be spending a lot of time in this area of the water park. I also like that they, the children's slides they have on the back end, the sort of medium-sized slides, well, one of them, you go right through a snake's mouth at the end, and I just love that. I think that's a wonderful, wonderful theming touch. 
This is another place I spent a considerable amount of time. This is Crocodile's Cove, which is a, just a, a normal swimming pool, but to make it fun, they have a couple of basketball hoops in there. Tons of basketball so you and your buddies can hang out and shoot around. Uh, me and Molly played horse a couple of times. And again, just another place where you can come and hang out, easily spend 20, 30 minutes in there. In addition to the big indoor-outdoor hot tubs, the Kalahari throughout the water park does have a couple of just normal hot tubs thrown about. Um, a lot of them fit a bunch of people in it too, especially this one here with the big waterfall and the rock work. That's a really, really nice hot tub. Also good to see these on the inside water park. That way if it was raining, you could still have a hot tub you could go into. Now, if you're gonna go in style to the Kalahari, there is a couple different cabanas available for rental and some of them are massive. Like, look at this thing. This must fit 20 people in there. You've got, I think, two different types of TVs, your own personal hot tub, Tons of chairs and couches and all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know what these cost. Um, it's not something I looked into, but they are available if you're traveling with a group. Now, there is a bar as well. In addition to the swim up bar, you got the cracked coconut here. And this is just your normal walk up bar. Now, one nice thing about the cracked coconut that the swim up bar does not have, and that is draft beer. And uh, it's really nice. Some of the draft beer is like local Wisconsin stuff, which for me as a traveler, I really like that. All right, you can see it there. That's the souvenir cup. And let's talk a little bit about that souvenir cup and the kind of the drinks you could put in there as there's a, a whole bunch of them. And if you want to see any of these in more detail, just pause the screen right now and you'll be able to see all the ingredients on these frozen or rocks drinks. Now, they're not cheap. It is $35 for that souvenir cup. And then if you want to refill it, it is $25. Uh, it's a massive beverage though. It's about 45 ounces. Each drink we got in there, we got a couple of them. They all had at least four shots in them. Now, if you want some food while you're at the water park, there is the Zulu Grill right by the front. And this is just kind of your normal snack bar kind of thing. Uh, nachos, burgers, fries, all that kind of stuff with some adorable uh, kids souvenir glasses as well with the elephants on them. And that'll do it. That's the tour of the indoor water park. I think if you're booking this hotel for the indoor water park, you will not be disappointed. It was one of the highlights of my trip. And now let's go check out the rest of the resort. In this next section of the video, we're gonna show you around the Tom Fooleries Adventure Park. Which I love that name. Yeah. It's a really good name for a uh, Very uh, Magic Kingdom esque as you're going into the park, you have uh, like movie posters for the rides. And very adventurous Yeah, music. very adventurous music. Um, so this is gonna be their indoor amusement park. Uh, slash family entertainment center, one or the other. But uh, the entrance is, I like how epic it is. Yes. And you can see like they've created like their own line of characters. All these guys on the wall here, as we uh, head on in to Tom Foolery's Adventure Park. Now, uh, one of the uh, biggest things they've got here is this giant Ferris wheel. All right, so we're now on the Ferris wheel. Uh, you don't really see a whole lot. It's kind of neat to be on an indoor Ferris wheel. You do see a little bit of like a, there's the Great Wolf Lodge and a McDonald's. You get a, a nice view of the go-kart track. But it is kind of neat being on an indoor Ferris wheel. And then like the big window here, it, uh, it just kind of looks out onto a highway. And some trees. But I guess like everyone driving by sees a giant Ferris wheel. And they're like, oh man. track is called Meteor Race. And uh, not a very long course, but it's indoors, so you wouldn't expect too much longer. No. But uh, you do pick up some good speed coming down the hill. And it's interesting, they're all electric go-karts. And then something I haven't seen before, they have onboard audio. Yeah, so they tell you like the rules and then... And like, you're doing great. Yep. Let's keep it clean. And it'll be like some music. Lap. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of neat. For me, one of the highlights of Tom Fooleries is the ropes course. They've got a two-level ropes course, but the coolest part about it 
is they have this beam section here. That is a zip line. Yeah. And uh, you just, as part of your ropes course thing, you just wander over here, you hook in, and you zip line across a good portion of the Tom Fooleries area. I've never been on one with a ropes course like, uh, a zip line like that. And I love that the zip line isn't straight either, like it's bowed. And uh, Molly, you're not a big ropes course person. Uh, how'd you do on this one? Uh, the thought of sitting down freaked me out, but once I started uh, going, I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. It is fun. a little weird, because you just walk off the edge, like yeah. right there. Um, and then this is really cute too. It's adorable. This might actually win for adorable. Yeah, they have a, a little kid's ropes course. Obviously, they're not big enough for the, the larger one. They just come in here and use this one. That, that, that's really cute. It's, it's really smart too. And it's good use of space because it just takes up room underneath the, the larger one. Ah! Yeah, this fun looking ride, the spinning drop tower, is called Maximum Velocity. Uh, really fun. And you get different views. Like you see into the bar and the, the bowling alley and the go karts. It was pretty fun. Great lighting package on it too. Yeah. So Tom Fooleries is home to a Triotech XT Dark Ride, which is a uh, shooting motion simulator ride. Mm -hmm. But the fun thing about it, it's included on your wristband, and they have three different rides in there. So you can play Road Fighters, or you can play Pirates or Los Banditos. And the cool thing about this, it adds like the repeatability. One, because you can play against your pals, and see who wins every time, and you can play all three movies. Yeah. Now Molly, we get to play all three. Do you have a favorite between the three of them? Oh. I think Road Rage was my least favorite. Uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, which is like a Mad Max kind of thing. I think most Banditos because they had so many that you can't shoot. And if you do shoot it, it's negative points. Yeah, I think, I, feel like I, think, I think we rank it the same. I think yeah. it's Los Banditos, Pirates, and then Road Rage, Bird Fighters. I would say um, not the best Triotech simulator rides. Like, I definitely think like Carnival or werewolves are probably like the best things they've done yeah. as far as on these. But it's still really fun that you can come back again and again and play different games and get different scores. So I think it's really great that they have something like this. So here at Tom Fooleries, they do have a roller coaster credit. It's called Sky Rangers. It's Go about here. the <laughs> about the smallest roller coaster you'll find anywhere. But it's still a credit. And if you're kind of like one of the roller coaster counting people like Molly and I, it does count. So this was 682 for me. For Molly, it was, uh, I think it's 508.5. 505.5. 505 505.5. And um, also credit to Molly for doing this as we get the ride in motion. Also, you get her, let her go around like 82 times and that'll be fine. So much fun. Next time for some mini golf here at the Land of the Lost Jungle. And uh, the course looks pretty neat. You got a lot of fun looking birds everywhere. And I think it's 12 holes. So the mini golf course, they sort of have this odd looking mannequin gentleman who's wearing his pants very bizarrely. And uh, if you're curious whose ball that is there. It's mine. Bounce ball for rock. Land it in there. Finishing up here, we got the 18th hole. I wonder if this bird used to talk. So he does have speakers, and he looks like he probably moved. But of course, overall, it's, it's pretty nice. And it's got water features. So Tom Fuller is all throughout the, the indoor amusement park area. They have a very large and very modern arcade. Like, I've never seen this thing before, where you sort of like throw a ball and demolish things. But yeah, very modern. Lots of really nice games. Connect four hoops, stinky feet. Lots of top-notch games here. I really like their carousel. It's interesting as they have like normal horses and then much more safari type animals. And I also love like the like the thatch design. Yes. It doesn't feel like it fits in with a lot of the other like decor here at Tom Fooleries, but like works well with the Kalahari itself. Something we did not partake in, but is included with the wristband is some rock climbing walls. And I like how they have different walls, like you have the pipe wall, and then like they time you as well, so like you can race your friends. So like you see the clocks up there, which makes it like kind of competitive and re-rideable. Another attraction here, they have laser tag called Fury 3, Fury, I almost said Fury 325, uh, Fury 242. And this is something we did not do. It is included with the wristband, but it's downstairs. 
And uh, there's really not been a lot of people here. No. So we can't imagine laser tag would have been great when we are here. But like, if it's downstairs, it, there, there's nothing else downstairs, so. Yeah. It has to be pretty big. Yeah, it would probably be pretty cool. Not included with the wristband, but very interesting. They do have a virtual reality arcade where they can play uh, 15 different games. And, uh, interesting. Uh, that looks pretty gruesome. We got some more large scale arcade games that are pretty fun over here. You got Laser Frenzy, which is kind of like a Mission Impossible. Yeah. And then you've got this virtual street race, which is just uh, like RC cars. Another fun large scale arcade game here is Atomic Rush, which you can see Molly playing here, which you have to try to change all the colors. You can play up to four people. It's included in your wristband. And it's a, a bit of a workout. Molly, how are you liking it so far? Yeah, it's a little difficult. So one thing I really like here is that they theme every one of their crane games with the prizes with a whole bunch of stickers. So like the Pokemon one has a Pokemon background. The Squishy one has a Squishy background. The Toilet Paper Emoji one has a Toilet Paper Emoji background. The S'mores one has a S'mores background. Like it, it's really, um, Really well done. Molly, you're a fan of adorable rides. Where would you rank Route 66 here? It is pretty adorable. It's a, like a one person, and I guess you kind of operate it yourself. Yeah. I, I don't think it's included, it's not included with your wristband. No, you need the, the You swipe card. your card, you lock yourself in, and then you just go around in a circle. It's, well, the kid needs an adult inside the cage. Yes, but that is, that is pretty snazzy. That, that's really cute, I like that a lot. Feels very European, yes. like not something you'd see normally in America. No, we would not have this. Now this is an interesting ride, Revolution. is um, like a kid's ride I haven't seen before, like a, a small version of, I think they're typically referred to as like a Miami Wave, uh, but done for kids. And then this is this is something pretty new over here. And this is like a, a virtual, not virtual reality, but like an interactive trampoline game. So it uses like an Xbox Kinect kind of technology to, while you're bouncing up and down there, you play a game. All right, Molly, are you ready to get centrifooled? Fooled? Yep. Centrifooled. Uh, this looks like something they probably charged admission for at one point and now no longer charge admission for. And all it is is a spinning tunnel. Uh, and I was already dizzy before. Now I'm very dizzy. Molly, this is pretty random. Right by one of the entrances is a giant, incredible Hulk. Yeah, it doesn't fit in. No, it's awesome, but it doesn't fit in. Yeah. Yeah, we had to put this on camera. It's like a little kid's submarine ride. In a submarine. And there's like a screen. It's, it's really a cute. Yellow submarine. Well, not. Oh, it's not yellow at all. One on the screen was. Oh, well, you're, you might be cut off now. Not open during our visit, but they do have a, uh, a food, like a snack bar kind of thing here. But it looks like different types of soft serve ice cream as well. But uh, not open for our visit. So let's talk a little bit about the pricing structure here at Tom Fooleries. If you're staying at the resort like we are, um, it is $35 per person, but it's good for the entire length of your stay. So that to me is a really, really good deal. Oh, it's awesome. So like we did some stuff yesterday, we came back today. Now if you're just getting a date guest pass, $38, not quite as good of a deal. But uh, I thought it was a really solid value, especially if you're staying for two nights. Yeah. There, there's a lot of good stuff there. They do have a bowling alley and a uh, bar and that kind of thing. The Volcano Lounge and Lanes, which is up this escalator here. More, more fun cartoon characters. So in the bowling area, they actually have some very interesting bar games. You've got foosball, you've got darts. Over here, you've got like a golf simulator. And then this one's really weird. You got hockey. I don't think it's turned on today, but I guess you go in there and you try to shoot pucks against this goalie. You've also got a couple video games up here, pool tables. Another different type of sports simulator thing. And then a, uh, a big like free throw kind of uh, pop a shot game. 
Oh man, and uh, shuffleboard puck. I love that game. So we're now in that volcano lounge for this happy hour from three to six. Unfortunately, the day we're here, the kitchen is closed, but they got cheap drinks in here. They do. Drinking craft beer for three bucks. Uh, Molly drinking just a Miller Lite for two bucks. And they got some like Wisconsin craft beer in here. They've got Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA, one of my favorite beers. And then check this out, guys. I didn't show this to you earlier, but they've got like legit gambling, like slot machines. Weird. So they have a ton of bowling lanes. Uh, pretty neat up here. Uh, we are doing this during the afternoon, so I think it's a little bit cheaper. So Molly and I are bowling uh, one game each, and shoe rental was like 11 bucks for the two of us. So like 5.50 each, it's pretty cheap. And they got that happy hour going on right now, so drinking some cheap craft beer and, and gonna bowl cheaply, like I really, the really good value. So since we're visiting the Kalahari in November, the outdoor water park is obviously closed. It is cold outside. It's pretty cold outside here. You can see everything winterized here. Uh, I would say the indoor water park is definitely the larger deal, but it does have some cool stuff out here. You've got a, like a toddler size play structure, um, but I'm assuming there's a very big hot tub over here. Uh, you got some large pools. Very large pools over mm -hmm. there. And then uh, you got a two main slide towers. You got this one here, which just have a bowl slide. And uh, I think those might be mat slides over there. A couple other things out here, let me show you in a minute. Also, there's a bar. Also out here by the outdoor water park, there's just like a, this probably like 25 to 30 foot tall elephant sculpture. Trying to climb the building? I don't know what he's doing. He, he looks he's he, adorable. He looks guilty. He does. In the outdoor water park, you do have another big splash fortress kind of thing for the kids to go play in. And it makes sense on the indoor water park, they don't have one of the big tipping buckets. So they do have one here on the outdoor water park. And it's like a tree house themed? I don't know, it's pretty neat. No, tiki huts. This slide here, I believe it's called the Smoke the Thunders. And uh, it's pretty new. I think it was a 2017 or 2018 slide. Uh, big multi-person raft slide. And it looks like a lot of fun. You go in a toilet bowl section first and then you drop into a big wave wall section. So that's a, an interesting combination slide. <laughs> M might be the best slide in the whole hotel. So this is the main lobby area for the Kalahari. It's where you would check in and get your wristbands and all that kind of stuff. Um, I like it. Yeah. Um, our room is actually up on the fourth floor right off the lobby. I love the statues, like the water. Yeah, this is it's really like cool. Hole. And then there's a really nice seating area over here. With really comfy couches. Oh man. They have some good couches over here. And a really cool rock sculpture kind of thing with all the animals in it and a fireplace. Mm -hmm. So if you have to like meet somebody before you were leaving the hotel for something like, or just want to sit in a really comfy chair. Yeah. Right off the lobby is the Ivory Coast Restaurant and Lounge. And I believe this is the restaurant that runs all three meals. Right now we're going in because there's a bar and they have a happy hour. So we're sitting here at the bar for happy hour. And honestly, happy hour for as fancy as a hotel as this is. Really nice. Really good deal. Uh, from three to five, you get chips and guac, loaded fries, or uh, cheese curds for five bucks. And then like beers for three or rail drinks for four. Uh, we want the cheese curds. They are delicious. They are. Uh, also in the mornings, if you're staying here for a couple days, like. Have yourself a nice boozy brunch. Look at that, bottomless mimosas, 16 bones. So we're back at the Ivory Coast for breakfast this time. I'm gonna give you guys a look at the menu. Uh, go ahead and pause if you wanna see any specific stuff. Got some, they got the, they advertise these cinnamon rolls. Those look good. You got a variety of sandwiches. Uh, the breakfast scrambles or an eggs man. I'm, I'm almost one with the eggs man at this. Uh, from the griddle, I did have this in a different Kalahari the s'mores French toast, and it was pretty amazing. Dessert for breakfast. It is. A uh, large selection of omelets, and then sides as well. Again, uh, pricing on all this stuff for breakfast is not not too absurd. No. On uh, obviously the best part of breakfast, bottomless mimosas for $16. Big glass too, so you don't have to like, some of them give you like the mimosas in a champagne flute when you do the bottomless mimosas. Not here. Uh, you get a big wine glass, so you don't have to reorder as often. So breakfast has arrived and uh, really big portions, holy cow. Yes. Uh, Molly, you went with the BLT 
egg sandwich. Yes. Which looks really good, side of hash browns. I went with the breakfast burrito, that's which is giant. It's gigantic. Like that that's my arm. That's a burrito. It's very large. Very large. And then a side of hash browns. This is a big breakfast. Uh, getting our second round of mimosas right now. All right, Molly, how was your breakfast sandwich? It was good. Really good. I like the bacon. The bacon's really good. I love my breakfast burrito. Um, lots of interesting flavors in there, and it's big. It's a really big breakfast. Yes. I do like it. Located right in the lobby area is the Sweet Hut, which has all sorts of uh, candies. I like the minions. Oh, the minions are cool. They're giant marshmallows. Yes. And then there's unicorn ones. And the chocolate dip Cho gummy. Oh, I don't know how that would be. I don't know how that would be. Oh man, look at that. Cookie dough fudge. We're just looking. Okay. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Look at the turkeys. That is adorable. Oh, we are filming this right around the uh, Thanksgiving time. Dark chocolate raspberry cups. More turkey stuff. Oh, we are filming this in November. The monkey Oreos. Those are really cute. Yeah, they, they do a great job with cute snacks over here. Cake batter truffles and Oreo truffles. Oh, you do have a kind of standard uh, candy thing. Which makes sense because of the global situation. They have it pre-packaged. Yep, that does. That makes a ton of sense. Ah, oh, you got gourmet doggy treats. Ice cream, either ice cream treats or ice cream scoops. Interesting, interesting flavors here too. Munchy madness, sweet cake batter with all sorts of stuff in there. Yeah, that's some good looking ice cream. Superman with the colors. Yes. And then what's the last thing we got over here? Candy, candy apples. And candy, cotton candy. And cotton candy and some popcorn. The main quick service food option here is Safari Snacks at the hotel. And this is located over by the entrance to the indoor water park. Hey, pretty much kind of stuff you'd expect. Chicken tenders, burgers, pizzas, popcorn, cheese curds, tacos. Yeah, pretty, pretty standard. Uh, Food court fair. Yeah. Uh, pizza looks pretty good though. Yeah, so that, that's a lot of pepperoni. Yeah, that, the pizza looks good. Right now we're going to show you around our hotel room. We were in 4315, uh, which was a King Whirlpool suite. And uh, we are not normally that fancy here at In The Loop. It just happened to be the lowest priced hotel room when we booked. We must have got it on a deal. It's very nice. The room's very nice, very big. A little bland on the walls. Like I think it could use a little bit more decorations or pictures or something like that. But uh, let's take you on a little tour here. Uh, you do have the bathroom, pretty standard kind of bathroom. Uh, one thing, the towels are wonderful. They're super soft, really, really nice. Especially when you compare them to like the towels in the water park, which felt like sandpaper. Uh, smaller shower. You do have a, a vanity thing over here, but what I like is they do have a, uh, they did kind of make a towel animal for us with a little elephant. Yeah. Uh, you have room to put your jackets, extra pillows, plenty of pillows here. You are definitely not going to run out of pillows. Uh, very important. Every every room, I believe, in the hotel comes with a, a fridge. Uh, we can't forget our beer. Whoop, I'm falling over. <laughs> you have one beer left. Uh, big ups to the liquor store down the street, though really close to the Kalahari. They sell uh, Steve Austin's own cold Steve Austin's Broken Skull IPA. They have a lot of beer selection. Yeah, they have a really nice beer selection there. Uh, good TV, a lot of channels on there, a nice easy guide. They also have pay-per-view movies. Uh, the bed was big, very soft, very nice. The sheets, though, not good. I, I didn't mind them. Mm, no, they're paper thin. All right, and the highlight of the room is probably right here, the uh, the big whirlpool jacuzzi kind of thing, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're, I guess, like a couple like we are. A lot of the stuff when we're visiting, everything kind of closed by 9. So, you know, hit that liquor store, relax. You've got your, your jacuzzi tub. You can hang out, you can watch the TV. It's a good time. Uh, you do have possibly the most comfy couch I've ever had in any hotel room. This thing is fantastic. That's good. Uh, now I know a feature you really like, Molly, was over here, the fireplace. Fireplace. Yeah. Well, we're from Florida, we don't get fire. No, we also don't get cold, which is kind of a new thing here in Wisconsin. And that's yeah, an automatic fireplace. Um, one thing with like, if you had this hotel room, 
You do not really have a good place to hang up your swim trunks after the water park. No. So, so what I would recommend is you use the chair like this, you put that near the fireplace, and that will dry off your stuff. And then let's finish off the room tour by showing off our balcony. Uh, we did not have the most scenic of views here. Parking lot? Yeah, parking lot. Uh, parking lot and convention center. I imagine if you get a one looking at the outdoor water park, that'll probably be a pretty cool view of that balcony. But here, not, not, the, best, uh, not the best of views. Not too cold this morning, that's nice. Right by the main lobby is the Cafe Manjaro, which is a uh, Starbucks and birthday cakes. Yeah, look at that cake. Yeah. Look and like delicious. a wedding cake? Yeah. I'd assume there's probably weddings here, right? Yeah, definitely. All right, you also have uh, baked goods. So if you want like a lighter breakfast, pretty good place for a lighter breakfast or a fancy snack. They got some good looking snacks. Like look at those cakes. They look really good. It's a big cake. They have a pumpkin cheesecake. You know oh, I love pumpkin cheesecake. Oh, you do cake. love pumpkin cheesecake. Oh, and cake pops. And then they got um, like uh, breakfast sandwiches as well. That's good. Yeah. And then over here, just some various uh, beverages and uh, cereal. Now for dinner, we're gonna do something we never do here at Inlu, oh. and that's fine dining. As they have a double cut steakhouse and seafood. So we're gonna come in, eat some really good food, which yeah. is not, not like us at all. Mm -mm. So the first thing you see when you come in is this really cool bar and lounge area. Uh, the bar has all the games on, but then the lounge is amazing. Like this lounge with the, the fire. Very modern, really, really cool lounge. It's like, even if you don't want to come in to have a fancy dinner, like, come in for a drink or a cocktail because the lounge is really nice. Guys, the first thing you see when you get to the restaurant is this insane drink menu. Ah, uh, cocktails. Beer on tap. The beer on tap prices are very, very reasonable for a steakhouse of this quality. Yeah. Uh, beer by the glass. They also have uh, a lot of fancy liquor pours, so bourbon and scotch, and whiskey. And they do flights as well. Then when you turn this placement over, is so that, many wines. Yeah, that's a pretty impressive wine. Right? Let's take a look at the menu here at Double Cut. Got a seafood bar. Uh, some interesting starters like primer beef sliders, hanging bacon, short rib tacos. Soups and salads. I'll say uh, French onion soup for seven dollars. That is that's a pretty good deal at a fancy steakhouse. Now of course you think steakhouse, you think steaks. Their big item is a filet mignon, eight ounce for forty one. But they do have a whole bunch of that, including the bone in tomahawk for eighty five. A variety of sauces and stuff like that. They also have prime rib. They do have a sharing platters for seafood. Some other stuff from the grill. And then some additional entrees over here. So sea bass. These are mostly fish dishes with one half chicken. They have sandwiches, which is interesting because like the ad for double cut in the elevators was showing up the primer sandwich, which looks amazing. And then uh, sides for the table kind of thing. Uh, dessert menu over here. And then they do have a happy hour, $7 happy hour from five to six at the bar. And a chef's table. So since we really don't do the fine dining thing often, I figured we'd go all out. We got a bottle of uh, Brut Rosé, a sparkling wine, which is my really the only type of wine that I really enjoy. It is only. Molly likes wine. a bunch, but uh, for me, it's really just anything sparkling. So the first course has arrived. You get a, a complimentary fresh break bread loaf, kind of yeah. half loaf, but it, it looks really good. It does. But then, holy cow, look at this, guys. We, we got the hanging bacon appetizer. And it, it's on like this whole little contraption with some bread. It smells amazing. Oh yeah. Mm. So some quick thoughts. Uh, the hanging bacon, absolutely amazing. I would say some of the best bacon I've probably had in my entire life. And it smells amazing too. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have the bread yet. Molly, how was the bread? It was good. It was very fresh. So a little dark, guys, but uh, the hanging bacon appetizer comes on its own specialty plate that is made in the shape of Wisconsin. 
as the Michael Buble version of You Got a Friend in Me from Toy Story Plays. Our second course of the route, we're going to share a French onion soup. A really interesting, like, base-like croc it comes in. So the main course is served here at Double Cut. I got the uh, the house specialty, the 8-ounce filet mignon, uh, medium rare. Also, man, like, their plating is got the logo on it. The steak knife has a logo on it. Where is it? There it is. It's on the plate. Now, Molly, we, we had to go with that prime rib sandwich yes. we saw on all the elevators. And it is every bit as cheesy as it looks in the ass. It's weird because it looks delicious, but it doesn't look fancy enough for this place. Yeah. But it's, it looks delicious, and I think I'll enjoy it. And you get a ton of fries. Because, like, the steaks and stuff, they don't come on any sides. But, like, the sandwich, for a much lower price, comes with a very healthy helping of, like, hand-cut fries. But uh, these look good. We'll let you know how it tastes in a little bit. Uh, the soup was good, but very, very hot. All right, so a little bit of entree review. Uh, my filet, very, very nice. It's cooked perfectly, hour, medium rare. A really nice crust on top. I got the, you get a, your choice of your sauce with it. I went with the peppercorn, and it is amazing. Uh, Molly, how was your, your sandwich? I had a bite, I really liked it. No, it's really, really good. Very cheesy. It's a very unique taste, because you think it would be like piping hot, it's really not. It's more like, kind of like a deli sandwich. Yeah. But the bread's really good, the cheese, everything's really good about it, every part of it. And uh, also you gotta think like, if you just order the filet, this filet is $41, no sides. That sandwich. $20. Yeah, $19 with a ton of fries. Which for my theme park fans out there, really tastes like the fresh cut fries at Cedar Point. Like that's what it reminds me of. But uh, I'm very, very happy with both of our entries. Not open during our stays, the Great Karoo Marketplace Buffet, which is a buffet they mostly, I'm guessing, run for breakfast, but then also probably runs for dinner on occasion. But it's not open right now. Also not open is the Great White Bar. Looks like mostly a bar they use for the buffet atmosphere. The buffet is pretty cool looking though. I mean, they've got big trees and then it looks out with these giant windows into the indoor water park. So that's, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool location. Right near the entrance to the water park is something that's not open on our visit, but you got zero latency free roaming VR, which is really cool. I've gotten to play that a couple times. They also have a couple of escape rooms over here. One themed to ancient Egypt, one themed to zombies, and one theme to uh, uh, like a bunker. So uh, interesting. Yeah. And they're quick too, 10 minute escape room. So you're not in there for a long time like some of them. Over by the water park, right, there is an activities area for kids, which looks like it's a like a painting or coloring area where you could do t-shirts or little statues. Really cute for kids. I do want to point out that they do have some really cool African art displayed on the walls of some of the hallways. So if you're into that kind of thing, it might be worth to uh, check out some of the various hallways. So they do have a gym here. It is Wayne's Gym. Yeah, it's currently nice. closed, but I guess there's two other gyms at the property that are open 24 hours. Um, probably not, I'm not somebody that would go to the gym while I'm on vacation, but you know, if you want to stay healthy and burn off that $35 mega drink, there's, there's options to do it. So I really like this, sort of by the entrance to the amusement park. They've got a giant bronze gorilla sculpture, uh, some comfy couches, another sculpture here. And then I believe if you walk down this hallway a little bit, there is a, uh, like a zebra statue. Outside, yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Neat. One restaurant we're currently only running on weekends here is the Wisconsin Brew Pub. And uh, it's a bummer because this is definitely would have been right up our alley. Oh yeah. You know, probably a lot of cheese, a lot of beer, uh, that crazy looking uh, Bloody Mary. Yeah. Uh, this I think would have been very much for us, but uh, not open right now. Only on the weekends. So since the Kalahari is kind of like a theme park resort, there's all sorts of machines all around. So you could buy collectible medallions oh, or- you get one. There's- You gotta get one with the gorilla making it. We gotta get one of these with the gorilla making it. It's a squash penny machine. <laughs> Let me find a dollar and I'll be right back to this. <laughs> Man, I love these nostalgia fueled things here. This is a mold matic machine. So if you haven't seen one of theirs, they make this plastic little elephant sculpture that does see the Kalahari resort on it. They make it right here if you pay three bucks. 
Not a bad price for a mold No, either. not at all. You've got another uh, old-timey fortune teller type guy here. This is Sir Glassmore. All right, Molly. His eyes move. Well, that's creepy. Look at it. It does. He's got shifty eyes. All right, so we're gonna spend a dollar on a souvenir penny made by a gorilla with shifty eyes. Uh, which one are we getting? We didn't get this uh, now monkey it's in this card. Time. He talks. Go ahead, make your selection. You've got four great ones right in I'm really happy we did this. Go ahead. <laughs> now stand back and watch my lovely and miraculous invention fashion your bright penny into something you're <laughs> gonna remember. Just a few more seconds, my friend, for your gorilla souvenir penny. <laughs> This is totally worth a dollar. And there we go. I didn't know that he was going to talk. I figured he would move his arm. And, and how's our penny, Molly? Let's see if we can get to a better lighting area. See this wonderful thing that Inlu just bought for 99 cents. I can't even see it. <laughs> there we go. Does it quite seem like it was the right, the right fit? But there we go. There's your gift, Molly. I'll cherish it forever. More foam machines over here. You've got a, a chip that will tell your fortune and a press penny machine. Now, I really like this one here that says, my friends went to Wisconsin Dells and all I got was this lousy penny. Guys, I'm really excited about this. Uh, at Tom Foolery's, there's one of these. There's an outhouse building that says for a good time, Open the door for one dollar. Now we saw one of these in Little Rock, Arkansas, and it did not work. I was very sad. Now we're gonna spend a dollar, and I'm gonna finally see whatever this thing is and what it does. All right, the dollar's going in. I'm gonna open the door. Oh, hello, Sir Reginald Blastamore here at your service. Oh. This is a bit awkward. Say, you look awful familiar. Have you met before at Kalahari? Dum, 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 dum. I'm the head safari man here at Kalahari. Have you visited all of our water parks? We've got indoor parks, outdoor parks. Dum, 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 dum. Thanks for turning the light on, by the way. Well, now. I am completely running I like that there's like a picture of an elephant in their outhouse, like a framed picture. But leave the light on so I may find And I also find it weird that for a good time open the door, you see a, a man doing his business and then selling you on going to the Kalahari. I don't like there's no toilet paper. Oh, he's out, yeah. Please do leave, cheerio, ta-ta, and all that. Well, that was wonderful. Is it worth your dollar? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to say it was worth my dollar. <laughs> I believe there are three different gift shops here at the Kalahari. And this one right next to the front desk is the Kalahari Outpost, which is, um, sells a lot of your, your kind of like your logo stuff, as you can see on everything. But they've got some really, really high quality stuff. And I like this. You get four Kalahari pint glasses and a coaster. Yeah. And it looks like a good coaster too. Yeah. You've got some Christmas ornaments. Not expensive either, like those guys down there. $2.99. Obviously lots of sweatshirts and water bottles. I like the tote bag. Yeah, that's a cool tote bag. That one's neat. That one is neat. All right, let's see. What else do we got here? We got snacks. Snacks, important. Bottle, Kalahari bottle openers, Kalahari luggage tags. Snacks, and they do have like a Obviously, if you're staying here for a while, you know, you could come and buy sodas and snacks and cereals and stuff like that. Let's see, you got Kalahari necklaces over here. Kalahari keychains. I like the magnet. The magnet's pretty cute. Postcards. Postcards? I like the one that's just a drink. Do you know what? That's the one we should send to my mom. <laughs> We do want to send my mom like a postcard from wherever we go. I think that's what it's got to be from here. Like this one would make more sense with the water park on it. But I think we might have to. There are two different ones. This one says sip sliding away. They have more, they have more postcards with drinks on it 
then they do water slides. <laughs> uh, you have a selection of Christmas ornaments, picture frames. Oh, yeah. A little bit more cultural stuff. And then a whole bunch of coffee mugs and shot glasses. I like booty shorts. And booty shorts for a ranger. He does love water park. He does. I like these guys. Those are some cool looking shot glasses. Yeah. There we go. 50% off those booty shorts for a ranger. And that's his size. Extra small. <laughs> Um, some, some important things to, to buy here, too. You know, swim diapers, goggles, you forgot your cord, that kind of thing. Yes. And then uh, toiletries and stuff like that. The next gift shop is Zach and Naka. Kids. Which, yeah, I think kid stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's it's all plushies in here. All right, so you do have uh, like a whole wall of kids' clothes. Oh, look at this. You could get a Kalahari character surprise box with whatever your favorite Kalahari character is. All stuff based on that character. I like the uh, long-armed lions and rhinos. Alright, you got some helmets. Rocks. Lots of kind of, uh, I guess, more generic kind of stuff. You do have some, like, themed bowls for the characters. But a lot of kind of like usual toys that you would see in uh, any kind of gift shop for kids. You do have some more Kalahari specific stuff like uh, soft balls to play with. Frisbees. Frisbees. All right, let's see, more, more toys, building block kind of stuff. We have a comic book. A comic book? For Tom Fooleries. Oh, Tom Fooleries and the Cave of Wonderment. Oh, that's something. Yeah, that's not something I thought we would see here. Um, I do like these. A little pricey at $14.99. Ooh. But they're figurines. Like this elephant is a lifeguard. And they're all branded with the Kalahari logo on it. Ooh, Pete the Cat. Oh, very popular with uh, Molly's nieces. And over here, a wall of plushies. A lot of them do have the, the Kalahari stamp on them. Yeah. Like the penguins. I was gonna say, even the penguin. Even the penguins. And that is the Zakanaka gift shop. One more gift shop here. This is the Safari clothing and swimwear. Which kind of makes sense. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty much what you would think it would be. It's uh, where you can buy bathing suits. Also some nice stuff. Like these are some uh, nice lady stuff over here. Not your style, Molly, but uh I nice. definitely have a sweater like that. Really? Yeah, your mom gave it to me. Ah. And then that that's nice. The sweater's nice. Yeah, no, the sweater definitely is nice. A lot of Kalahari stuff. This store's really big. Let's see, what do we got here? More clothes and stuff in the back. Yep, some more hoodies and the towels look really nice. The beef cuts are really nice. Yeah. Yeah, beach bags and the towels. Really nice. Snazzy. Very, very nice. Alrighty. And that'll do it for our time at the Kalahari in Wisconsin Dells. I think for me the biggest takeaway is just how much there is to do at this resort. Between the big indoor water park, the Tom Fooleries Adventure Park, the the bowling alley. I love that area, that bowling alley and all the like bar games up there. Like there was just so much to do here. Uh, Molly, what were some of your thoughts on the Kalahari? I agree. The Tom Foolery, you got a really good deal if you were staying yeah. there. That and, was amazing. We were only staying for one night. If you're staying for multiple nights, that is a really good wristband deal. Mm -hmm. So, and I also liked how much drinking there was, how many options yeah. of bars, if you know me. Uh, there. Yeah, you, you had the indoor bar in the, in the indoor water park, like the swim-up bar. You had a happy hour in the lobby. You had a happy hour at the bowling alley. You had bottomless mimosas. So, uh... Definitely for the adults and the fans of adult beverages, plenty to do as well. And then uh, I liked how a good collection of slides. Yeah. Um, I'm not much into body slides either, but there was a lot of different raft slides. And I think it was really good for all uh, different families and family fun. 
yeah, I liked it quite a bit. I give it a big thumbs up. Uh, I loved our dinner, the fancy steakhouse dinner. Not something we do often, but uh, I, I, there was really top-notch stuff there. And overall, I give the resort a big thumbs up. Uh, we've been to two of the Kalaharis now. Definitely want to check out the other two at some point. And uh, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you're going to the Kalahari in the Wisconsin Dells and you have any questions, let us know in the comment section below. We'll do our best to get back to you. And thank you very much for watching.